my name's Claire Carmichael, I'm a second year adult student nurse and today we are going to raise the awareness for mental health. And here is... Taylor Smith. <laughs> and that's all I do. <laughs> just my name. Actually I do art. I can say yeah, that you do I'm loads of things. an artist in some way or... She's a very good form. artist. Thank you. I don't think very I am. Good. She needs to make a book with all of her art. That'd be pretty cool actually. You should. Do some weird, be really good. weird drawings. And this here is Ghost, or as I like to call him, Ghosty. Ghosty. And he's my Ghosty with the mosty. Ghosty with the mosty. <laughs> Sometimes likes a toasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so firstly we're going to start off with some questions, but I just wanted to hand over to Taylor and just let her explain a little bit about her own life and yeah. conditions. Basically, I've been seeing the mental health team since I was 13, 14, and I'm now going to be 30 in, like, 29 days. Um, to start with, I got diagnosed with bipolar um, because they were unsure of why my moods were kind of up and down all the time. Um, and then there was no diagnosis, then I became anorexic, and that, you know, took quite a few years of my life to recover from that. Eventually I got diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, but it's now actually called, I think it's called emotionally unstable personality disorder, they actually have to use that terminology mm. now. Have they changed it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, I mean, some most people still call it BPD, but they have changed it, like mm. when you kind of go to a psychiatrist it'll be written down as emotionally okay. unstable personality disorder. And then my second diagnosis that I've been given, because I have like confirmed uh, like diagnoses is unspecified schizophrenia so it's I don't fit a kind of subcategory of schizophrenia it's kind of like a spectrum disorder so there's not actually much about it online like I've looked it up mm. I found one page that has some symptoms um, but it's kind of they don't know much about the illness mm -hmm. yet so they can't really judge how it's going to affect you for your life and in what way it's going to affect you but you will have some of the similarities of kind of hearing voices or seeing things or having like paranoid thoughts or delusional thinking and things like that and someone explained it to me of like when you have schizophrenia you have positive and negative symptoms mm. and the positive are things that are kind of added on to you so like hallucinations, delusions, paranoia and then your negative symptoms are things like depression, um, like lack of concentration, not looking after yourself, things that have been kind of taken away from you. Mm. And I think that's a good way to kind of how to describe it, because it's split into two things. So it didn't mean positive of like good things, yeah. it means just things that have been added to your personality. So then, I mean, those two diagnoses were only recently diagnosed, and it's taken me that long to even get there. Mm. And I had something called a Milon test, um, and it obviously diagnosed that I have like it was like a hundred percent that I had anxiety, like an anxiety disorder. Um, and then there was another one which was called schizotypal personality disorder, mm. which is not actually schizophrenia itself. It's kind of you do get like paranoid thoughts, but it's kind of like withdrawing from people. You know, only having a few mm. close friends and relationships and just kind of being quite... And, and another actual symptom is being quite wacky and eccentric. Mm. And I was like, that is you that's too. definitely me. <laughs> <That's you too. laughs> but in a good way, in a positive way. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's kind of a brief description mm. of what's going on with my body. It's really interesting that they, they call it positive and negative. Yeah. I it's think really it bizarre. is. Yeah, because you kind of think, well, how's that a positive thing that you're hearing things? Yeah. But yeah, it just means things that are added on okay. and negative things that have been taken away. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So, I suppose it's positive in the plus sign, isn't it? Rather yeah. Than, yeah. That, okay, that makes sense. So, it's me in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, so how do you, with all the information you've just told us, how do you think people view you? like healthcare professionals, if you're going to say A&E or something, if you have um, an episode? See, I think A&E, they can be, it very much varies on who is there, if that makes mm. sense. I mean, 
nowadays when you go down to A&E they will let you see the mental health liaison team if they feel like you need it and they basically just sit you in a room and kind of say well you have like the last time I went I'm kind of basing it off of that they kind of sat me in a room and just spoke to me about how I'm feeling and they said mm -hmm. well this is part of your illness there's nothing else we can do for you because you're not at immediate risk mm -hmm. of killing yourself or because I went there because I threatened to jump off a bridge and they were like, well, we don't think you're a risk. So That's not a risk. <laughs> they, sent, they sent me home. They're like, bye. Okay. Um, but like previous experience with the A&E, they've never been that great at kind of mm. helping. I mean, some nurses are nice, but then some of the doctors can be a bit... Do you think they judge you, though? Yes. I think. I think another thing is, because I have a lot of piercings, I know it sounds silly, but I do think I get judged on that, the mm. way I look. Um, I think because I look different, they just assume that I'm yeah. someone yeah. when I'm not that person. Yeah. But it's more, I feel like, I do feel like they judge you, especially if you have like a diagnosis of like emotionally unstable personality. You mm. do get judged a lot because you're seen as an attention seeker. That is one of the best, like the biggest problems with that mm. diagnosis is you are seen as someone who wants attention. And I guess in a way you do want attention, but you're not meaning it in that kind of way, yeah. if that makes sense. You just help, need help. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Um, and I remember once when I self, sorry if it's too deep. No, it's okay. But when, when, <laughs> when I self-tarmed once, I went down to A&E and they left me for nine hours because they just said, well there's nothing really wrong with you, so we'll oh just God. leave you. That's terrible. Nine hours later, I had, like, my cuts, like, glued up, oh and God. they said they had to give me a tetanus shot, and the guy doing it said, well, you know, you're not going to care, look at the state of you. And I was just like, I don't need that right now. Like, no. I know what I've done. You know, I didn't mean to waste their time, and I, I wasn't going to go to hospital, but an ambulance got sent out, and they're the ones who told mm. me that you need to go get them glued, because they're deep, yeah. so... Yeah, so I don't know. Doctors, I think, view me okay. Like, they always have been quite, like, GPs. They've always been quite understanding. They're understanding. That's good. But I think A&E... See, a and &E, I don't think, is the place for people with mental health problems to mm. go. But there is no other place that no. for people with mental health problems to go. <coughs> you know, it's kind of... You ring up these helplines. Mm. And if you're at immediate risk, the only thing you can do is go to an A&E. But it would be better if people didn't judge. I think it's just the stigma of people are still viewing it as... Yeah. Like I was saying a minute ago, if you're like like other people who aren't doctors or in the healthcare, you know, if you mention the word schizophrenia, you know, mm. a lot of people automatically think, oh, you're dangerous, mm. when that's not always the case. Yeah. Like, I go to, like, a rethink group, and pretty much everyone in there has schizophrenia, and they're lovely people. Yeah. They're actually quite shy and vulnerable. Mm. They're not... And you're not that sort of person. No, like, like I wouldn't... Ten years now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not some weird axe yeah. murderer, do you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I don't have that in me to do yeah. that. I think it makes you more vulnerable, and I think that's yes. how people view you. They, yeah. Some people either view you as being dangerous, or they get to know you, and they see you as being vulnerable, yeah. so they that's know they true. can take advantage of you. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Just learning, kind of who to be friends with and who's going to stick up for you if you are in a vulnerable position. Yeah. But it's good because you've got your friends. Yeah. It's good. It's just the healthcare system that needs to be better. Yeah. I think. To some extent, yeah. I mean, there is some nice people. Mm. I'm not going to say everyone's been horrible, but the majority is, is being quite bad. Like, some of the CPNs are awful. <laughs> they just... I had one CPN ring me up and she was like, how much alcohol do you drink? I was like, don't drink. And she laughed. I was like, why is that funny? She's like, everyone drinks, Taylor. And I was like, well, Did I she? don't. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, bad. how is that professional, for that's, one? No, that's then they were like, okay. we need to drug test you all the time. Oh my and I was like, God. I'm not taking... Mean, I, I understand they need to rule things out. Yeah. It's just that The amount of times I've never... I've said, I never, I never do drugs. Yeah. And, like, oh, and my piercings are another thing. <laughs> Like, I've been in there. Oh, one of them thought I was a man. Oh. They wrote down he a lot of times. Mm. And I was like, oh, does, my, does my voice not give me away? I am a woman, <laughs> but... 
Um, but they do judge, like, they're in their report, so, like, Taylor has facial piercings. Mm. She has, the, it's like, what does that got to do with my mental health state? Yeah. I mean, I got asked if I was in a tribe because I have ear stretchers. Uh, the psychiatrist like, do you believe you're thing. in a tribe? And I yeah. was like, mm, no, I don't. You're not in a tribe. <laughs> People need to of. stop judging these things. Yeah. And as healthcare professionals, like we've always, as a student nurse, we've always been told never to judge somebody. Yeah. You listen to your patient, and then you go on from there. That's so, good. You know, I think that needs to. But everybody needs to be on that same page. Yeah. <laughs> in my opinion. Okay. So, what has been your best treatment received from healthcare professionals? <laughs> so I'm hoping honest. there's something in here. <laughs> I'm trying to, that's what I was trying to think. That's why I laughed because I was like, um, <laughs> anything to actually. Up. Recently, I have a new therapist. She is actually really nice. Mm. She's very understanding. She'll listen and she will like really take on board what I'm talking mm. about. And if I am struggling, you know, she will be there to listen mm. and, you know, she's very good at kind of advising what to do. Yeah. And she, like, cool. recommended I make one of those, like, self-care boxes, mm. well, self soothe box, with bits in that I like to kind of calm me down. Mm. And before I, like, think, oh, I need to hurt myself or I need to do this, Congrats try box. using that. Yeah, that's a good And idea. then see how I feel, like, in five minutes or ten minutes. But, like, she's been amazing. I mean, I've only met her what, four times, but she's, she's, she's really, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I that's feel good a lot better that she's on board now, yeah. so it is good. And I mean, some doctors have been nice. Like, the doctor I have, like, my GP surgery, she's very understanding. Like, she will mm. listen and kind of try and get me the best treatment she yeah. can. Another thing I want to mention is there's a... What's it called like a helpline? I don't know if you want to put this in your linky yeah, thing down in the below. Is called I think it's called Papyrus, or it's either called Hopeline UK, and they're like a suicide prevention line. They're open ten till ten every day. They are really good. Like they'll set up a safety plan with you. They'll listen to everything, even if you're just having thoughts. Even if you yeah. kind of have thoughts but you don't have a plan, they'll sit. They'll listen. They'll talk you. You know, they'll talk you through it. They'll ask kind of just other questions not mm. even related just to talk to you. Mm, that's and that's cool. the only helpline that I found that are really helpful. Mm. And they're so understanding and so caring. So I definitely do recommend them if you are struggling because they are really good. Mm, I haven't heard of them, to be fair. So. Yeah. No, they're a really good yeah. service. So use yeah. them if you're struggling. <laughs> okay, so what is your worst, the worst. experience so, of healthcare? Probably going back to when I went to hospital and that guy said that the crisis team are like it might be different for other people. I'm mm. only going from my own personal experience. Yeah. Obviously, in Milton Keynes, our crisis team number is the one for London as well. Um. They cover they cover some areas of London and Milton Keynes, yeah. but they're also the uh, helpline for the Grenfell Tower incident. Oh, okay. So they help other people, like yeah. people who've been through that yeah. as well now. They are just so unsympathetic. They, I think it's it's almost like they don't actually want to be talking to you. Mm. Like the, the all the times I've rang them up and I've said I'm really struggling. I need someone just to listen to talk back to me to calm down. She's like, well, if you feel bad in two hours, ring us back. <laughs> and it's like, well, I oh, feel God. bad now. I need help. That's not okay. No. No. And it's the same thing, and they've done it several times. If you feel bad, ring back in a few hours. But in a few hours, it, yeah. Yeah, you could have done, done something, or, yeah. you know, you're still going to be feeling worse. So you're sat there for two hours just, just feeling waiting. crap. Yeah. So Feeling worse because she doesn't want to speak to you. No. It's like when I rang up, she was like eating something. It's like, you just had her chewing down the phone, and I was she's like... Probably on her lunch break. She's like... It's like Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but it's just no, really no. ridiculous what people say. It is ridiculous. I was just like, what is wrong with you? Oh, God. So, as a patient, what do you think healthcare professionals can do to help? Listen. That's it? Yeah. Yay. Listen. <laughs> okay. We can yeah. all do that. <laughs> I think that is the main thing, is to listen more and to communicate. Mm. 
and not be aggressive in what you're saying like don't say like pull yourself together get over yourself you know oh, yeah. everyone feels down or snap out of it those kind mm. of things <coughs> you know it doesn't help yeah. it makes them actually feel really invalidated because you feel like oh you know everyone's getting fed up with me feeling like this i think the best thing to do is be caring and listen more mm. and just kind of understand that okay this person is struggling you know and i think a lot of people who have mental health problems would say that someone listening to them and communicating yeah. in a nice manner actually helps them more than mm. most other things like obviously medication again is something that if you do need to take it i do recommend taking it because some people are very anti-medication mm. and if that's the choice they want to make that's fine that's their own personal choice but I think, well, for me personally, I have to take my medication, mm. otherwise I can't function. Yeah. So, but I think listening is and like communicating is the best yeah. thing that professionals can do. And it's simple. It's something simple. It's something really simple. Everybody can do. And but more people need to do it. I yeah. Think. And I think just understanding people's concerns and not judging them for yeah. it, and accepting what it is and you know, trying to, you know, work out ways of how they can make that person feel more comfortable. Mm. So. That makes sense. Yeah. How can nurses improve to provide the best care yeah, for their Yeah, I patients? think it'd probably be the same. It's the same sort of yeah. question, isn't it? It would just be by just listening. Listening, caring. yeah. And Better not training, judging. I think. But I think, you know, there isn't enough money in the no. mental health system, is there? And everyone knows it, and it's yeah, all over the news, yeah. but still nothing's actually being done nothing, about it. Yeah, you're right. A lot more needs to be done for Yeah, I won't go into politics, because no, it's no. get, but... We're not all about politics. No. <laughs> but there is no funding, there's no staff, no. there's no services. No. <laughs> Let's face it. You might as well just... <laughs> I don't know. Why don't they have, like, a 24-hour... Because this is what I wanted to do, but it would yeah. cost too much money, because yeah, I don't have the funding to do it. Yeah. But, like, have a centre that is open 24-7 so people could go in, talk to someone, talk to mm. each other, have mm. a cup of tea, have some biscuits, and just have a chat. Yeah, and just listen to each you other. You know, and obviously, like, smoking, I'm not, you know, saying smoking's great, I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, but, like, a lot of people with mental health problems do have a cigarette. Why don't they have, like, a little area where they can have a cigarette of a cup of tea 24-7 yeah. so you can... Hello, this guy. This hey, guy, guy wants to be in the video. Come on, then. Come here. This is this guy. Mm -hmm. My third She's child. Gone. But it's just getting the funding to do yeah. that that would be very difficult. But they need. If I think if there was a centre like that, I think a lot of people would benefit yeah. from it. Because they would know that 24-7 there was people that can just listen and talk to you and yeah. kind of go somewhere that feels safe yeah. and not in an A&E where there's all this stuff happening. Yeah. Something that is designed just for people with mental health problems. I think it'd be amazing. I think it'd make a lot of difference. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to talk about is, like, male suicide. Because I don't think it gets spoken about enough. I mean, there is more stuff now, like, in the media talking about, like, male suicide. And there's more help for it. But I think it's difficult because, obviously, men don't tend to speak out. And, I mean... Mm. It's difficult because I can see that it is harder for males to kind of explain how they feel. And I think there should be a lot more campaigning and help for... I mean, there should be help for everyone who commits suicide, don't get me wrong. But I think there needs to be more attention on male suicide mm. to kind of understand it better and, you know, let them know that it is okay to talk to someone about how you feel and that you're not alone in it. But obviously men have this thing where they just kind mm. of keep it all bottled yeah, up. They do, yeah. yeah. And it's sad, you know, because they feel like they don't have anyone to talk to. And I think definitely, you know, more attention does need to come to light to that. I mean, there is a new, um, I don't know if it's new, but... There's a helpline now, especially for males. Oh, is that? Uh, it, I know it's called CALM. I'm not sure what the letters stand yeah. for, but it does stand for something. But there is just a, a, a line just for men to ring, which I think is really good. I can put that, the links below. Yeah, I'll get you the links. links. 
This guy's going through your bag. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, definitely, like, because I, I was reading up the statistics, and like, like I was saying to you earlier, I think three quarters of suicides are males. Three um, quarters? 75%? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. I didn't think it was that hard to be yeah, fair. Yeah, 75% are men. Wow. And it is the single most common killer in, in men between the ages of 20 to 45. Gosh. Which is really sad, yeah. you know, that it's got so bad that people feel like this is the only way out. Yeah. Is, is to commit suicide. Yeah. But yeah, if I give you the links, you know, if you are a male and mm. you want a line that really is... Good. Yeah. You know, dedicated to like male suicides, there is that number to call. So, yeah, I think men do have it tough, like you said. Yeah, it's more, I think, just personal opinion. Don't shoot me, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think men they've got, they've got like more pride, I think, than yeah. women, haven't they? And they, um, I think, they feel like they have to be a certain way, yeah, they have because to be the big, strong ones, yeah, because that's what yeah. society has told yeah. you, but that's not true if you're a man and you're struggling. <laughs> Please Say talk something. to someone. Say something. Exactly. Because no one's going to think any differently of you. Yeah. Like, you know, it was the same with, like, uh, borderline personality disorder. Everyone was saying, oh, it's more of a common in women, mm. which actually isn't true. I think it is a 50-50 split, but because men don't talk about their symptoms, yeah, that's true. it's not yeah. diagnosed. And then they don't get the real facts because no. it's never publicised. No. Because, yeah. It goes undiagnosed. So, you know, it's like the whole anorexia thing. It's very kind of centred mm. around women who have anorexia, but it's like men do have anorexia too. Same with like, sorry, this is very deep, but rape, you know, mm. it's People not just women who can get raped, it yeah. is men as yeah, well. That's true. So, and they need to, there needs to be safe places for, you know, men to open up and mm. talk about these things. And making it more aware. Yeah. Making, making people more aware, talking about Definitely. it. Definitely. Is I think it's quite important to mention is the fact of obviously we spoke about doctors and nurses and like mental health professionals. I think a lot of people leave out that people like paramedics and like the police and stuff because mm -hmm. they do all have an input of like mental health and like all the paramedics that have come out to me or you know taken me into hospital and I've had quite a few like because of my mental health have all been so nice. There was one that was quite rude but when we got to the hospital he did explain the only reason why he was like that was because he was worried about my safety mm. so that's you know I, I completely understand that but literally every paramedic i've had has you know has been so understanding mm. they haven't judged me they've always reassured me several times if i need it like i had a paramedic out actually last night and um because of my breathing and stuff and he was so he was so nice to me he said, if, you know, do you need any reassurance, he asked me some questions. And he really did reassure me so well. And they've always been so nice and caring. That's good. Um, I've had to have the police involved a few times because of my mental health. Um, obviously at risk of, like, mm. being in danger and stuff. Oh, yourself. And they've all been so professional and so nice to me. And, like, you get... There's a lot of bad media around the police, but all the police I've had have, have been like so understanding. I mean, one of them sat with me because I couldn't get in the ambulance because I was so anxious. And he sat and he had a chat with me and he goes, no. do you want me to come in the ambulance with you? He goes, I don't mind. He goes, I'll, I'll sit there. He goes, I'll even, you know, just talk to you about anything mm. you want. Um, and he goes, I don't want to leave you really. He goes, I'm worried about you. And he was so nice. Bless him. And obviously the paramedics took over from, from them. Um, and like obviously I had to get searched and stuff. I had to be searched twice. And then I got searched actually. It was embarrassing, but I know it wasn't their fault. I had to get searched up the shopping centre um, because I'd had one of these forms to fill in about like suicide and, you know, how likely on a one, you know, a scale of one to five you're going to kill yourself and things like that. And then the police got sent mm -hmm. out. And they were coming to search me, and he goes, "Look, I know that you're with your friends, and you're in the like middle of a public place. Like, do you have anything?" And I said, "Honestly, I don't have anything." And he said, "Would you like us to drive you to the hospital and yeah. get you seen or anything?" And they were so nice. Um, and he actually said that police are now having to be trained in mental health mm -hmm. because a lot of the mental health systems 
if they don't know what to do with someone, they send them to the police. Mm -hmm. And it's sad, but they do yeah, have they to do, do that now. Right. And they're having to get extra training to kind of understand this. Mm -hmm. And they're which, already understaffed and you know, stress as exactly. well. Exactly. And I think they don't get enough credit for it. Same as paramedics, you know, they're the people some of the yeah. time that they're the first they're to the call. The first yeah. point to call, aren't they? Exactly. You know, you ring up and they send like, because obviously yesterday I rang 111. And if you explain that you're having breathing problems, their automatic thing is to send an ambulance. But like I said, he was so nice and they always have been. And I really do praise them for doing that. Like, they've been so great. So, it is good. Big it up Thumbs up public to the paramedics <laughs> and all of them. Yeah. They do do good, to be fair. They do. The ones I know are yeah. really good. It is, it is good that you know there are really nice people out there yeah. who do care and understand another quick thing i wanted to mention if you're like me and you forget your medication obviously you can set like timers and stuff mm -hmm. but if you're on facebook there's an app called blink oh. um and then you basically write to them what you want to be reminded of so it takes drink water and then you can say take medication and you can mm -hmm. set times of when it will text you my doorbell's just rang <laughs> hello is that a reminder from your app? <laughs> <laughs> it could have been. So that is it from us. Hopefully we've raised some awareness about mental health and from somebody that actually has mental health, which is always good to come from the person, I think. Yeah. Um, rather than just reading online and surveys and things like that, I think it's better to get the real experience, I think. So thank yeah. you. Thank you so thank much you. for doing this. Because it is ha thank it's you. actually really hard for Taylor to vlog and do things so I act, fully, I act normal fully. on the outside <laughs> but inside I'm going <laughs> no this is like a massive achievement for Taylor to actually sit and do a vlog with me so thank you thank you for coming over and yeah and if you need help then um what I was going to say is like my channel oh, I'm going yeah. go to start making channel. more vlogs about mental health so if you want to yeah. discuss it more or if you want to talk to me like I'm, I've always said to people if you're struggling with mental health I'm always open to talk to you and hopefully you'll be able to put the links below yeah, yeah. You know, there's also another one called Sane Line as well that are very good there's Sane Line, Hopeline UK and there's the Calm one for men okay. we'll and also Rethink are very good as well the Rethink charity are very good and if there's one in your area and if you can refer yourself to them they're very, very helpful. That's so, because that's who I'm going to... You know when you can do a donate button now on Facebook? Oh, yeah. To charities, I'm going to put Rethink as my that's one. That's good. Go. So, yeah, thank you, everyone, yeah. for listening. And see the details below, because I'll post all of Taylor's YouTube thank channel you. and all the links and things. And look at her vlogs, because they're really good. Thank you. Yeah. Now we're going to have a cup of tea. <laughs> Goodbye. See you